So we have talked about refraction, a property of light where the light goes from one medium to another medium and changes speed. And when it does that change of speed, maintaining the same frequency and changing wavelength, if it comes into that boundary of the medium at a particular angle, or actually at any angle, um, not the normal, you can get the bend, light to bend of that. It could look something like this. So if I have a block of glass and I have a normal to that block of glass and light comes in at an angle. I'm going to make it kind of a drastic angle so you can see a little better. When that light goes into that medium, it because it is going from a fast speed medium to a slower speed medium, it is going to get bent toward the normal. And I'm just going to say something like that, a really small angle so that I can um, make it drastic. And so this angle is much smaller. Then when it hits this boundary here, again at that smaller angle, it is going to bend away from the normal because now we're going from slow speed to fast speed. And so now it is going to bend away from the normal. And it's kind of the same idea that we had when we looked at the pencil in the glass of water. That the ray coming in was coming in at this angle and the ray exiting is here. You'll see they're parallel to each other but it was shifted um, from each other so that the glass inside bent it to the normal and then away from the normal and so it looks like it was almost cut in half or cut at that point. We can use that property of light or that idea of light in lenses and lenses as defined are just curved surfaces and so the normal of the lens varies at different locations on the lens. So here the normal will look like that where down here the normal would look like this and up here the normal would be something like that. And so they're transparent objects, they refract light, and they cause that light to converge, which means come together, or diverge, which means separate the light. And so by doing these convergence or divergence of light rays, we get real and virtual images. Um, converging lenses, this type, forms both the real and the virtual, and we'll show you those. And diverging lenses, which look more like this, they form only virtual. Okay? And so the converging lenses, it depends on the object location, if you're going to get real or virtual. For the diverging, it doesn't depend on the object location. It just, all, no matter where the object is, you will get a virtual image. So just a reminder, real images are... Uh, images that are formed when the light rays actually come together and they form that image, the convergence of the light rays, and they can be projected on a screen. So my LCD projector on my ceiling forms real images. Um, the uh, lenses that are in the movie theater where you're seeing an image on the screen, those are forming real images. Virtual images are ones that seem to come from a point, but they actually don't. So we talked about that with mirrors. When I look in a mirror, I can see an image, I can see myself, but it's not being projected on a screen. Um, if someone else isn't looking in the mirror with me, they can't see it. Same thing with a magnifying glass. A magnifying glass forms a virtual image. I can put a, ver a magnifying glass above some print in a book, and I will see the print larger than it actually is written, but it's not projected on a screen. If I'm not looking through that magnifying glass, I don't see that in large print. So those are both virtual images. So I already said we have these converging lenses that are thicker in the middle, and I said they look like this. They're also called convex lenses. And in these, light is bent inward. So when the light comes from a distance away, it will be bent inward something like this. And I will show you a picture like that in a little bit. And a diverging lens is one where it's thinner in the middle. It is also called a concave 
lens, which makes sense. It's like caved in. And the, uh, these kinds of lenses, if light goes into them, will bend away or the light will diverge. Not creative naming, really straightforward. So both of these types of lenses have what we call a focal point. The definition of the focal point for the two types of lenses is not the same, however. So for a converging lens, it is defined as where an object at infinite distance from the lens will focus or the image will appear. And this will happen on both sides of the lens. And I will show you what that looks like. And so we will actually do this in our lab. We will take an object and it's going to be the overhead projector and you are going to put your converging lens an infinite distance or really far away from the overhead and you are going to find where is that point where the overhead gets focused on your screen which is going to be a note card. A diverging lens has a different definition for focal point. It is where the light rays seem to have come from, but they are not obviously coming from that point. It's where your brain tries to put those light rays together, and they didn't actually come from that point, but it's where your brain seems to, very much like when we talked about mirrors. And then the last definition here is focal length, and that one is just the distance between the focal point and the center of the lens. So to actually look at these, we can see a converging lens right here. The light rays are coming from a distance far away here, going through, so the light is over here. Okay, light rays are going through the lens and then converging at a point over here. And that point is called the focal point. It wouldn't matter if I flip the lens around and I shine the light from the right, I would get a focal point on the other side. So you'll see that there's a focal point on each side of these lenses. And then the focal length is defined as from the center of the lens to that focal point. So in our lab, you are going to put the overhead projector an infinite distance away or a really far distance away. You are going to put that overhead projector on. So if I put actually in this picture, here's my projector. You are going to move your lens back and forth, back and forth, and you're going to have a piece of paper right here. And as the lens goes back and forth, you are going to find a spot where you get an image of the projector on your screen. When you get that, you hold that still and you measure the distance between the middle of your lens and your screen, and that is your focal length. A diverging lens does exactly that. It spreads out the light. And so if light is coming in from over to the left here, it goes through the lens and then spreads out. Your brain is over here. Actually, your eyeballs are there first, and then your brain is in your head. But And your eyes are sensing these light rays and are thinking, where did those light rays come from? And so as you can see right over here, those rays that are separating, you trace them back to where they seem to have come from and that is defined as your focal point. So over here these diverged if I trace them back this was diverging trace it back this one went straight through right along the normal so there is no refraction this one diverged I trace it back diverged I trace it back and that is where the focal point of that lens is and then again, the length is from the center of the lens to that point. And so we can predict where these focal points will be, these focal lengths will be, and where the images will show up, and what type of image it will be, by doing what we call ray diagrams. And these are only going to work for thin lenses, because the, thi the thickness has to be small compared to the curvature, so it can't be like a sphere. They would act different if it was a really thick, like almost ball of glass. And so when we draw the lenses for these ray diagrams, a converging or a convex lens is just going to be drawn as a straight line with arrows pointing outward. A concave lens or a diverging lens is going to be drawn as a straight line with the arrows pointing inward. There are some specific rules that we will follow when we're drawing these ray diagrams, and they are right here. You'll notice that the first 
rule or the way that we draw all the rays are the same no matter if it's a converging or a diverging lens. So for all ray diagrams we will draw three rays. One is called the parallel, one is called the central, and one is called the focal. And no matter what, the parallel ray will start out parallel to the principal axis. And so what is meant by parallel to the principal axis, when we draw these ray diagrams, it will look like this. We'll draw the lens, and then through the middle of the lens, we will draw the principal axis. And so if I have an object out here, let's say, oops, that's supposed to be a straight line still out there. If I have an object like a pencil, again, and the tip of the eraser of the pencil, if I want to know where its image is going to end up, the parallel ray goes straight across. The central ray goes to the center of the lens. That's always the second one. And the focal ray goes through the focal point. Now the focal point can be a variety of spots. And so I have to know where that focal point is. If it's here, it goes right through it. If it's back, it goes right through it. And we will show that. You'll notice, so no matter if it's a converging or a diverging lens, the three rays are parallel, central, and then I'm just going to draw this one in here. It's not always in that spot, but focal. What happens when they hit the lens, though, changes because the converging lenses, like we already said, spreads out the light, or sorry, bends in the light, and the diverging lens spreads out the light. And so we have to follow these rules differently when the light hits the lens. So converging, it'll pass through the focal point, through the center of the lens, and parallel. Or diverging, it's away through the center and parallel. And we will go over those when we practice the ray diagrams.